Okay, so I decided to give up on rushing and I'm just making a second video and I'm going to connect the two. So um, this will be a little bit longer than 15 minutes, um, but I am hoping that it'll make more sense because I'll like actually go through the problem instead of making you figure it out. So um, the first question says, use derivatives to find the critical points and inflection points of the following functions. So I'm um, going one just because I need more space. This is this computer. Um, <clears throat> so kind of the first thing you want to do is find um, why is this lagging so much? Stop. I'm hoping that this is gonna work better. Sorry for the annoying things. Okay so um, first thing you want to do is find the first derivative and even the second derivative. So the first derivative will help you find all the critical points um, and then the second derivative will help you figure out um, the inflection points. So um, I usually I like to find f prime first. So this one's pretty simple. It's just uh, the power rule. So 5x to the fourth plus 60x cubed is the derivative. Um, and then the second derivative is going to be 20x cubed plus 180x squared. Okay, so. You would then want to, your critical points are where f prime equals zero, and your inflection points, <coughs> excuse me, your inflection points are where f double prime changes signs. So first thing you want to find is where is f prime zero and where is f double prime zero. Um, and then we can make a number line and like um, figure out what's happening for the function. Um, so go ahead, you want to find where f prime equals zero. So you want to set f prime equals to zero, and then solve, and then do the same thing for f double prime. Okay, so for f prime, I set it equal to zero, so 5x to the fourth plus 60x cubed equals zero. So to solve that, you have to factor it. Um, so both of those are divisible by five and x cubed. So I pulled out a 5x cubed, and I'm left with x plus 12. Um, so then to solve when that equals 0, you need to figure out when is 5x cubed equal to 0. Well, when that, that's when x equals 0, because then you have 5 times 0 cubed times 12. Um, and then also when x is negative 12, because then I have 5 times negative 12 cubed, which is a big number, but then I have negative 12 plus 12 here, which means I'm multiplying by 0. So this whole thing would be 0. So x equals 0 and negative 12. So those are my two critical points. Um, and then to find my inflection points, I'm going to do the same thing with f double prime. Okay, so do the same thing here. 0 equals 20x cubed plus 180x squared. I factor that to be 20x squared times x plus 9, um, which is equal to 0 when x is 0 and when x is negative 9. So those are the three points, or three x values, 0, negative 9 and, and negative 12 that I'm interested in <clears throat> because these aren't necessarily my inflection points but they're the only places where I could have an inflection point um, because remember the definition of an inflection point is where it changes concavity so um, this is where it equals 0 so it might that would be the place that, that it would change concavity if it did <coughs> so then what I personally like to do is I like to make a nice long number line um, and plot my critical points um, and then these points as well where my um, second derivative is zero. Okay, so at this point, um, you want to look at the signs of the derivative, um, of the first derivative and of the second derivative on either side of your critical points. Um, so my two critical points are negative 12 and zero. So I'm going to start with finding the signs of the first derivative. So I'm going to put, um, like, on the top, I'm going to put the signs of the first derivative, um, and we'll look at uh, look at that. Okay, so f prime is 5x to the fourth plus 60x cubed, um, and I want to know on both sides of my critical values, what is the sign of f prime? So negative 12 is my first critical value, so I want to know on the left of negative 12, what's the sign of f prime? So I would just pick a value of x that's to the left of negative 12, which the closest one is like negative 13, and then you want to plug that into f prime, and you want to see what is the sign of that number. So um, in this particular case, 
it's a large number, but that's not relevant. So if I plug in negative 13, um, I get negative 13 to the fourth times five plus 60 times negative 13 to the third. The thing that's important is that this number is positive. That's all I care about is the sign, not the actual value. So then I would put a plus sign to the left of negative 12. Okay. So then my next critical value is at zero. So I would want to know what is the sign of f prime to the left of zero, which is also to the right of negative 12. So all of the values in here are going to have the same sign of f prime. Um, because negative 12 and zero are the only two places where it's zero. So um, I'm going to pick a number that's easy to calculate in between negative 12 and zero, um, which happens to be it doesn't have to, it can be any number in between 0 and negative 12. It can't be equal to 0 and it can't be equal to negative 12 because those values will make f prime 0. So you basically would do extra work. Um, so I like 1s, so I'm going to pick negative 1. When I plug in negative 1 for x here in f prime, I have negative 1 to the fourth, which is positive 1 uh, times 5 plus 60 times negative 1 cubed. So this is going to be a negative 60 plus 5 is negative 55. Again, the only thing that matters is the sign, nothing else. So um, that is going to be a negative f prime. And then I want to do the same thing to the right. So um, I would maybe use positive 1. Um, 5 times 1 to the 4th plus 60 times 1 to the 3rd is uh, 65, which is positive. Um, so basically what this tells me is from at negative 12, I go up, I have a zero slope, right? And then I go down. And then, um, so negative 12 has to be a max, a local max. And then at zero, it goes from negative to positive slope again. So basically, <clears throat> what that does is it tells me that negative 12 is a, um, a local max, and it tells me that 0 is a local min. Um, so that's kind of nifty. So then I want to do the same thing for those 0 values of f double prime. So let's take a look at that. So f double prime, remember negative 9 and 0 were the places where um, your second derivative was 0, so those could be inflection points. So you want to check the signs of f prime to the left of negative 9 and then um, in between negative 9 and 0 and then after 0 um, to see if it changes because that will give you your inflection points. So um, before negative 9, I'm going to choose, oh, um, how about negative 10 because um, that's to the left of negative 9. So if I plug in negative 10 into the second derivative, um, this is what I get. Uh, I plug negative 10 and I get negative 2,000. Again, number doesn't matter. All that matters is the sign. So what I know is that the double prime is negative to the left of negative 9, which makes sense because if it's negative and f prime is 0, then it has to be concave down, and this has to be a local max. Between negative 9 and 0, I might pick negative 1 again, because that's a nice number. Um, when I plug in negative 1 here, I have negative 20 plus eight, 180, a positive. So that's going to be positive in between negative 9 and 0. And then I might pick another x value to the right of 0. Um, so 20 times 1 cubed is 20 plus 180 times 1. Um, okay, so that's going to be positive as well. So what that means is that because at 9 it changes from a negative to a positive, then, um, this thing's so freaking slow! Um, because it changes from negative to positive, that means that negative 9 is an inflection point. But 0, on the other hand, changes, doesn't change. It goes from positive to positive, so this is not an inflection point.
So if you look at the graph, it's kind of hard to see everything because it's, it goes really, really, really high. But at zero, you do have a local min. Um, and at negative nine, which is like way up there, you have um, a local max. And there should be an inflection point, like if I drag this, because ah, again, you know, major problems. <laughs> There's going to be an inflection point in there somewhere at negative nine. So the more I zoom out, though, the harder it is to see the function, which sometimes is why using the derivatives is a lot easier than like trying to look at the graph and figure out where the maxes and mins are. So that's generally how you do those types of problems. Um, I would say um, try the rest of the problems um, on this. Make sure that you can do them. I'm going to write out the answers. I'm not going to go through them. But um, please try them on your own first and then um, check and see if you got the right answer. Um, and I'll do my best to like write out my steps and, and what I'm doing through the whole thing. Um, and also I kind of, I just erased the second problem for part, uh, for the first, <clears throat> first part. So, um, question two is the same question, but for the function, again, sorry about the technology, it sucks today, um, is 5x minus 3 times the natural log of x. I did this because I wanted to refresh your memory of the derivative of natural log, which is 1 over x. So, go ahead and try those. Um, and then we will do more of these in class. Okay, bye. Okay, so for number one, f prime um, is five minus three over, uh, three times one over x. Um, and if you solve that, you get x is three fifths is the only critical point. Um, keep in mind that the natural log of x is not defined for negative numbers or zero. Um, so there's like no function uh, at zero or to the left of it. So the derivative from 0 to 3 fifths, um, if you plug in a value in between 0 and 3 fifths, which is like maybe 1 fifth, you get a negative number. Um, if you plug in something to the right, like maybe 1, you get a positive number. So 3 fifths goes from decreasing to increasing. So this is a local uh, minimum. Um, and then if you do f double prime, um, you get 3 over x squared. Um, so I just wrote 1 over x as x to the negative 1, and then do the power rule. Um, and if you multiply both sides by x squared, you get 0 equals 3, uh, which is not solvable, so you get no inflection points. Um, and then um, for 3, um, this one just asks for the critical points and the first derivative test to determine all local max and min. Um, so I just took the derivative. You want to solve that. Um, it equals 0 when x is 2 and 0. Um, so it decreases to 0 and then um, so it decreases and then levels off and then decreases again um, because it's negative derivatives both here and here to the left and right of 0. But then at 2, it switches to a positive derivative. So um, that's actually a local minimum. Um, and then this part here. I actually went through that whole problem and I realized that I did it wrong. So um, this this question is kind of challenging um, because you kind of have to like pick one of the functions and see what the derivative would look like um, and then what the second derivative would look like. So I figure it out after some time um, that b is um, f of x. That's a dot, not a prime. So that one's f of x. Um, because what you want to look for, um, so with b, which is kind of like challenging to see, but this is b here. And what you want to look for is, okay, where's the derivative 0? Well, it's 0 about here and about here and about here. And then you want to see, um, sorry, it's so delayed. Um, so the derivative is 0 there and there and there. Um, and so then you want to see if there's a function that has that goes through the x-axis at those three points. And you notice that a does. It goes through the x-axis there. And it goes through the x-axis um, here. It's kind of behind my green line. And it goes through the x-axis there. So my next best guess then was f prime. So then I just want to ch double check for f double prime. 
So you see f is concave down here, and the derivative's negative, then it's concave up, and the derivative's positive, and then negative again. That's 